We're getting our presentation set up. We'll be with you in a, briefly. Okay, I'd like to call to order the City of St. Helena Special City Council Meeting Monday, November 4th, 2019. Um, I will uh, ask everybody to rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. And maybe we have a roll call. Mayor Ellsworth. Here. Vice Mayor Doring. Here. Council Mayor Koberstein. Here. Hudson. Present. Shuto. Here. Okay. Now on our agenda it says public comment, but since this is a special meeting, public comment is reserved for the, the agenda item. And uh, what the way that we, we want to approach this is for Mr. Presswich to uh, lead us into this discussion. We'll have a bit of council discussion and then open it up for public comment. So that's the, the order we'll proceed in tonight. I'm very briefly going to just take a moment. Uh, I want to thank the community uh, for the focus and calm last week during the uh, power shutoffs, during the fire, the tension uh, through that. Uh, the community did an excellent job of, of uh, staying together. I uh, want to thank the fire department, the police department, our public works, all of our administration um, did an excellent job and our council as well. So thank you everybody and uh, we'll now move into our agenda item which is uh, item 4.1 and um, Mr. Presswich, shall I read that or would you like to begin? Sure. Oh, oh, also I would like to introduce uh, Kara Ueda, who is our new city attorney, uh, joining us up here for the first time tonight. So thank you for being here. Welcome. <laughs> so, Mark, shall I pass this off to you now? Uh, sure, either way. You can. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Um, good evening, Mayor and Council members. On September 17, 2018, just over a year ago, I reported that several factors had contributed to an important moment and opportunity in the city's history to properly repair, improve, and or replace several deteriorating, underutilized, and substandard civic assets. These factors included the completion of a comprehensive public engagement planning and outreach effort, the SHAPE Committee process, a data-driven analysis of the condition and market value of the civic assets uh, performed by EMG, awareness that failure to invest in civic assets will cost the city more money in the future, and an improving general fund financial position. Since that time, we've completed an RFP process that culminated in the hiring of Nolan Tam, an architectural firm. Uh, you received a report from them, an interim report on options related to improvements on assets that the council had prioritized in September of 2018. And 
they will be back next Tuesday on November, tw November 12th um, with the information that you requested, which is massing details on the scale of buildings at different locations, as well as cost estimates for these assets. We've also reorganized the Public Works Department and related processes so that our buildings and streets, our parks, and our underground utilities staff are used more efficiently. And I suppose it's also relevant to let you know that City Hall experienced a sanitary sewer overflow uh, since September of 2018. That occurred this spring. It closed City Hall for three days, as you recall, and it interrupted our staff operations for about three weeks while new flooring was um, replaced throughout the building. Um, we also have a broken heater currently in the back of the building. And for the last couple of days, one of our two bathrooms uh, is currently broken. Should be repaired soon. Tonight, we're taking another planning step in the preparation in this journey. Tonight's workshop is uh, a meeting to discuss process. You will soon have the opportunity to make decisions related to site selection for a placement city hall requiring you to decide among several competing ideas and, deter and to determine how to phase, fund, and renovate or construct civic infrastructure. As I've said from the beginning, I don't believe there's a right answer. There are just many different configurations and they all have merits and trade-offs. Our work to date on the civic infrastructure strategy, which the council approved in September of 2018, has resulted in cost estimates for downtown streetscape improvements and options for the replacement of City Hall, upgrades to the library, and other community space. We do not yet have cost estimates for our storm drain infrastructure, but I can provide you an educated guess on those numbers. This workshop has been, has been convened to assist you in organizing the decision making associated with these tasks. This is not a meeting, and I want to emphasize this, this is not a meeting where decisions will be made on which investments to make, site selection, or funding strategies. The objective tonight uh, is here. This is, uh, the city staff is recommending the council discuss and provide feedback on two core issues. One, what evaluation criteria, principles, and process you want to follow to guide and prioritize decisions on site selection, renovation, and or new construction. And secondly, the framework for evaluating financi financing options to fund any desired improvements. And in the staff report, we know that there are subsections to each of these, and we'll walk through those in a moment. So just as background, uh, this is the, a summary of the civic infrastructure strategy that the council adopted in, in September of 2018. The baseline research and public engagement refers to the shape committee process. Uh, number two is where we are today and we're essentially nearing completion of that. And that requires decision making to determine what to advance to a planning stage where you would direct architectural design, uh, you would receive bids on desired improvements, you would make decisions related to a funding strategy. And then step four would be to construct those assets or renovate those assets, whatever the case might be. I inserted this uh, into the PowerPoint at the last minute. And so the, the slides, the handouts that are in the back of the room don't have this, but this is this is a, an infrastructure roadmap that I sh shared with the newspaper a couple of months ago, and I, I moved the, the little yellow line there a little bit to the right uh, as we moved into quarter four. But this is a, a, rep a, a diagram of different uh, activities that are currently underway with respect to our infrastructure. It's not everything, but it's a good look at um, what's been active over the last uh, two years. And so we're approaching uh, decisions in early 2020 related to site selection, funding, et cetera. And some of our, our improvements, such as the streetscape project, think sidewalks, are moving into an engineering phase and a permitting phase with Caltrans. 
And so this is just a visual representation of where we've been, the concurrent activities that are underway, and where we're going. And there's a separate handout in the back of the room for that. In the staff report, uh, we shared a couple of uh, evaluation criteria. This is, uh, these are evaluation criteria developed by the SHAPE Committee related to city facilities and services. Uh, I've added the two columns to the right to uh, illustrate an opportunity for the council. I don't know if we'll have time tonight, but this is intended to provide you an opportunity to revisit these and uh, consider if any need to be updated or added. Uh, and so this is a list of the city facilities and services. I won't read through these. These are just uh, criteria, evaluation criteria that were developed by the SHAPE Committee with respect to our city facilities and services. The next uh, slide is a summary of pressing needs uh, related to the SHAPE Committee. Uh, included in the staff reporter is information, and this is really intended to acquaint you in advance, to reacquaint you in advance of next Tuesday's uh, council meeting on November 12th, when Nolan Tam will prepare provide you summary information on the cost estimates for the various configurations you asked for, along with massing details. So we'll see some diagrams as well, and this is these are this is feedback that came through. Uh, the online survey that they did with respect to this to the civic buildings process and there's a second page to that where roles and services with a library city hall and parks and rec um, this is just a summary so the two question the two core questions related to criteria principles process as well as the funding component uh, this number one here, we have outlined in the staff report the anticipated presentation process on November 12th. So tonight we want to also receive any feedback you have for us related to that presentation, anything you, else you would like to see beyond what we've identified in the staff report. And then secondly, uh, related primarily to the second question on funding and the financing approach, these are questions that the staff is seeking feedback on. So for number two, for example, uh, what criteria and principle do, does the city council have an interest in establishing criteria and principles related to financing options? So you have them related to buildings and assets. Do you want to develop criteria and principles related to financing options? And this would be a conversation for the council. Number three, uh, would you do you want any more information related to the evaluation of our city assets or appraisal of our city assets? We, have an, we had an appraisal done. Uh, it's a little dated now. Uh, these were not local real estate um, folks that assisted with that. And I will share with you that the cost per square foot that came out of those conversations uh, was low. So I don't know if the council would have an interest in reevaluating that. And then number four. The staff is anticipating that uh, certainly we want to update our long-range financial forecast annually. Uh, we're anticipating that the council will want to run different models with various civic improvement options to determine what that does to our fund balance, our ability to fund um, over multiple years. Number five. The city has used different resources uh, over the last year and a half as this process has evolved, um, including some financial advisors. Uh, the, the SHAPE Committee has served as a terrific uh, idea generator with uh, information on different configurations. The question for the council is, do, do you have an interest in use of additional financial advisors as you begin to narrow the focus on funding strategies for various improvements that you would want to advance to a construction um, stage. And additionally, do you have any interest in some form of a task force that might look at different configurations and provide you feedback, whether that was a, an expert panel, uh, consulting um, revenue experts, some local 
uh, talent. Um, that's the question for the council. And I've added number six here, other. Is there anything else that the council, that we're missing that you're interested in that we should be thinking about as we begin to move forward? So conceptually, I'm anticipating that this activ these activities and these questions, it may take us multiple special workshops that occur concurrently with council meetings over the next month or two or beyond. And that we flesh out this information as you're receiving information on the numbers, which I, in terms of timing, Noel and Tam will come to the council on, on November 12th. The information on the streetscape will be shared on either the 26th of November or December 10th, uh, that council meeting. And why don't I pause there, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask uh, for questions from the council in just a moment. But what I want to clarify to everybody here today is, is that we're not here tonight to talk about specifics in terms of numbers or site selection. Uh, we're, talk we're here to talk about the process in which we discuss that. Uh, and that will be starting next week as we get uh, the Nolan Tam uh, reports. So as we think about what we're talking about tonight, it's a little bit hard to, to delineate it, but we're, we're not going to be getting into specifics about what we think or, or where, we, where we're going to go. We're talking about how we frame that conversation. So with that, I'm going to open it up to, and, and so I will open up the public comment after we have uh, some discussion with the council. Uh, is there any initial council comment? Yeah. I guess one thing that strikes me is that many of the questions involve a certain amount of expertise by professionals. And I know that there is a question that says, should we get more expert opinions on, on the direction we're going? Some of it is policy making, but some of it really is uh, incumbent upon our staff to sort of weigh in on some of these issues. And I know that's difficult to grapple. You know, staff executes policy. There seems to be a lot of overlap here. And I, for one, don't feel like I have, I have certain expertise in certain areas, no doubt. Um, I just want uh, the city manager to comment on that in terms of the philosophy of, of management uh, with respect to these issues. Um, I'm looking for more direction from staff, and you may say, well, I'm looking for more direction from council. So I, I would just uh, ask you to comment on that. Well, I think I'll break it down into a couple pieces. Um, one, with respect to revenue strategies, um, that involve ballot measures. I think you have some uh, talent inside City Hall that we can help with a lot. And I think uh, a lot of background on financing strategies. Once there is a, and I have, I, I would have recommendations and preferences on approaches that the council might take uh, with respect to finding additional revenue if additional revenue was needed for certain circumstances. but. That is, and I think if if there was a ballot measure involved to fund any particular asset, uh, whether it was a parcel tax or a sales tax or something else, I would recommend that the council uh, pursue some polling on, on a measure like that uh, to provide you feedback in advance of putting something on a ballot if that was even in consideration. But I think this really, it, for me, um, making a decision on site is probably something that will drive more recommendations from staff. And so we've thought through a lot of issues related to relocation, for example, and studied a number of uh, options related to that. And we have some, uh, in fact, that's probably the easiest thing here today for us is we, we do have some great solutions that don't cost a lot of money for relocating staff temporarily and uh, still m ensuring that we serve the public well. But I think I'm going to need direction from the council on site selection, which is going to drive different forms of analysis. Site selection for City Hall 
um, you have multiple options. The information that you'll receive, by the way, next Tuesday, uh, it, it's plug and play. So the, the cost estimates for a one-story city hall are numbers that you could move to a different site. So just know that that's something that's configurable. So we have very good information. We have better data today on the costs to build or the costs to fully renovate certain assets. Um, but I think that it's frankly going to require some prioritization. I don't think that the council, I don't think the, the city can take on the costs um, entirely at once. And so I think it's going to be very important to phase um, this work. And I can, I can, if you asked me for the most cost-effective approach, I can answer those questions and offer you some recommendations. Uh, and I'm happy to do that. Uh, but I think I need some feedback uh, longer term on where your where your your interests lie on in in which assets you want to move forward on. M Mr. Vice Mayor, do you mind if I? Um riff a little bit on hiring experts and expertise. Um, it's been something I've been thinking about a little bit recently around the different um, items that have been in front of the city and will continue to be in front of the city. Uh, I have a lot of confidence in city staff. I think they're really um, quite capable and I'm, I'm pleased and proud to um, have them working on our behalf. But I think it is important to realize that most of them do not live in town. And so instead of having a St. Helena troops that are fighting for us, for our town, we've really hired mercenaries, right? We've hired like the French Foreign Legion. And um, the only way that the French Foreign Legion can do a great job is if it has local guides to know how to fight. And we have world-class folks in our town and in the upper Napa Valley. We have world-class architects. We have um, finance experts and muni finance experts. And we have people that understand um, all of the issues uh, that are facing us. We have great contractors. We have great builders. We have... Um, we have such a range of um, expertise in our town, um, to speak nothing of all the, all the lawyers and former lawyers we have. Um, I would really encourage us to figure out a way to use those guides um, more than um, shifting it to outside consultants, because then I think it'll make our the mercenaries that we have fighting for us more effective by having that local expertise and those local guides. So I'm really, it's an idea that I'm trying to develop a little bit further, but I, I think it's, it's really something the city could do quite well to take advantage of the citizens that, uh, that exist here, because we really do have um, very smart and capable folks that I think are willing to help us do the best job we can and help our staff. How would that work for the task force? Because wouldn't that isn't that what you're asking? Where we it's, could put it's in? A, it's a concept where uh, some of the financial talent uh, in the town would be part of a a group of people that could provide you independent thinking on different configurations. So, I think you'd want to give them a very short timetable, probably a fairly small group. Um, and they would provide you thinking or analysis on different approaches, whether it's phasing, financing, et cetera. I do think some kind of um, staff, you know, it's fine, but for the staff, t I think the staff should be available to that group for resources, as resources to speak through municipal, municipal finance issues and timing with respect to other revenue strategies that may require votes, et cetera. There are some complexities with the, the funding side. I would like that. I think that would be good. And I would like it to be as non-political as possible if we can find people that haven't already made up their mind on one side or the other, um, particularly about the Adam Street Hotel. I would like it to be separate from that and just purely looking at what our options are um, and giving advice. I want to address a little bit what we're supposed to be doing tonight, and I'll talk about it more later when we get into it and get some public comment, but I think we can't lose sight of the criteria we already have. Um, and there are some common themes that resonate through that criteria. And we have a vision statement, 
and a mission statement in town and you take a good look at them. One of the themes that runs through it is to be economically sustainable, um, also to be family friendly, to continue to update, update and improve our infrastructure, provide a full range of business, cultural, recreation opportunities and housing. I think these things all relate to, or should, relate to how we try to make some of these decisions. Um, our mission statement talks about maintaining and encouraging an environmentally sustainable community. And I think that should be a large part of what we're taking into consideration when we're looking at new buildings or we're looking at old ones and trying to determine um, if we should be renovating them for the future and what the pros and cons of that are. <clears throat> I think we also have to look at our council goals. I mean, we have goals that we have adopted and we've been following a work plan for several years. And one of them um, is to maintain safe, reliable city infrastructure with a commitment to environmental stewardship. So that environmental message comes through again. And to me, it, it's gonna rise to the level of some kind of criteria, at least for myself. We also have a goal to ensure the long-term economic sustainability, not just of the city's general fund, but of the downtown. If you look at that uh, goal and you look at our work items under it, a lot of it has to do with improving the, the viability of our downtown business. I think in part this goal grew out of concerns about what was happening to downtown business. And from that, we had a market study and discovered some things that we needed to make some capital investments, but we also needed to do a lot of administrative things and consider options that maybe we hadn't ever considered before. So I, I think we, we need to be cognizant of those, and I think it's really important for us to try to anticipate f future needs or plan for them or have strategies to deal with future needs that we don't even know of now. And that may sound like an impossibility, but to me it has to do with flexible space um, and not necessarily locking a building into one life for 25 years if it maybe doesn't plan, plan, that, plan out that way. But I think it's also um, climate change. And I think we need to think about um, not only sustainable buildings, but sustainable land planning. I think we need to think about more pedestrian connectivity in town. Um, not be so worried about having an overabundance of parking spaces when we're trying to reduce uh, greenhouse gas. And lastly, I think we have to think about the character of the community, which relates a lot to aesthetics and um, what everybody appreciates now. So this is kind of where I'm coming for, from, and I see how a lot of these criteria kind of fit into those um, categories. And to me, they are uh, among the most important things we should be considering when we're making these decisions. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to open it in just a moment to the public uh, comment, and tonight uh, we'll make sure to limit it uh, to one time speaking, uh, up to four minutes. If you have something more to say after that, you can email us. We're not making any decisions tonight. This is, this is us having a discussion about criteria. We're not looking at specifics to make decisions, so if you don't get your points in, you can email afterwards, um, and that way everybody, we, we keep on time. So before I open it, I'm going to read again the, the two, the objectives uh, that were on slide three. Staff is recommending the City Council discuss and provide feedback on these two, these two things. One, what evaluation criteria, principles, and process you want to follow to guide and prioritize decisions on site selection, renovation, and or new construction. So that's about criteria, not about specifics. And then two is the framework for evaluating financing options to fund desired improvements. So there's two aspects, and we'd be 
very interested in your opinions on, on those. So with that, I'm going to open public comment. Uh, and if there's anybody that uh, would like to speak, uh, please come up to the, the microphone. <laughs> well, we're, we're, we're going to get back into the conversation, but we want to hear the public comment. Yes. I'm Anthony McKellar, 1125 Canelo. The only reason I'm here is to save the city money. I think the city has thrown away so much money to consultants, it's ridiculous. This is a plan I came up for Adam Street. As you can see, the Historical Society is willing to build a cultural center there at their own expense, probably seven to eight million dollars. Can I another group with a of, point yes. of order? Yes. I mean, Anthony. This is to save you money. You guys are throwing okay. money away. So, wait, stop wait, I, time. Would you, I don't think a plan of where yeah. things are going I'm just trying to say that you're throwing money away and thinking of building a new library someplace when you have ladies here that have worked at that library for over 50 years so combined, next, next, I'm and they Anthony, don't want any of this. I, Why do you, you could, keep spending money please, to, to build a structure that nobody wants that works there? Ne next you never week, consult the people next, that live here. Next week, the meeting is going to be about presenting the specifics. So... You guys just throw money away right and left. If you can reframe that as a criteria, I think it's relevant to what we're you trying to talk about. It's okay. You've been sent an email about the library. I know all about it. And unfortunately, nobody up there wants to listen to anybody who works there. Okay. Let's uh, move forward. Good evening. Tom Belt, Hillview Place. Um, Mayor, uh, I won't speak to anyone individually. Uh, one of the things that was discussed tonight were uh, a lot of the policies and the goals and the uh, mission statements and so forth uh, that were discussed. And uh, one of the things that was missing from this conversation was the fact that um, one of the most important things in my mind is what the people of the, of the city of St. Helena want. And I heard nothing talked about that at all. So I'd like to just say once we know um, what the cost estimates are, and and once we know, um, maybe we, we need to have a better idea of where the site selection will be. Um, you know, I read the uh, the staff meeting minutes, and there was I think 462 online um, uh, a survey from an online survey from uh, from Tam, and uh, it was like 37 percent to 45 or 44 percent in favor of the uh, Adam Street, but um, that's only 462 people out of perhaps over 2,000. And I, I, I would like to see the city spend more time and effort in getting the public's opinion on what we should be doing once we have more final figures. Um, Thank you. Costs and so forth. Thank you. Uh, just to be clear on that statistic, you can go ahead. Um, it didn't. It didn't. That that polling uh, figure was not directed necessarily to Adam Street. It said near the library. It's slight nuance. There, <laughs> there's a big difference though between what we, uh, what the different proposals are and Adam Street itself. Slightly different. Hello, um, I'm. Dan Hale, 1616 Madrona in St. Helena. Um, thanks for having me. Um, I'm encouraged by uh, the varied comments uh, that you know started the meeting. Um, I, I appreciate that approach and hope to sort of support uh, the process. I think discussing this with you all and the varied stakeho stakeholders and just about anybody else will sit down with me uh, has been a pretty enlightening process. Um, I appreciate your time in that endeavor and also here today. I, I don't underestimate both the frustrations involved in measuring community inputs and the complications involved in forming a workable solution. I do believe that as we look to the options presented by the work of both the consultants and the steering committee, some of the sobering facts that come out of that data is the less abstract concept that our long deferred infrastructure needs and our imaginations and wish lists have far outpaced our financial ca capabilities 
as they are currently framed. These important and informative exercises, uh, these are important and informative exercises to have engaged upon. I believe it is important to not be wedded at this time to presupposed outcomes, but to healthy approaches and frameworks for solutions that have the best chance of success. As we look at Adam Street parcel options and data and what our funding options are, I do not believe we can afford to hamstring and degrade the very asset that may well be the primary and most powerful fuel that can enable and fund a workable and successful solution. I believe we must have an accurate accounting and demonstration of both the potential value of, of the sale or the lease of the appropriately maximized and the restrained Adam Street parcel opportunity in both upfront funds and the ongoing financial boost in terms of taxes, TOT, and populating our Main Street, and the lost opportunity cost you should, should you choose not to preserve its value in addition to the unfunded outlay of chosen infrastructure repairs and new builds. I believe that calculation needs to be included in these discussions. I believe that the correct framing and handling of these assets combined with creative public and private partnerships are likely to be our most efficient energy source for a solution. I believe that we also have to strategically address what I view as a too long standing counterproductive narrative that pits newcomers against old timers and visitors against locals. I believe that narrative has unfortunately influenced and cyclically stymied our progress. I think we need to strengthen and nurture that coexistence as a healthy interaction and source of enrichment for all of us. That balanced approach can and should inform the approach as we move forward to solve these problems. I believe that we can accomplish that, and it doesn't need to be seen as kind of an either or proposition. Um, I also believe that we have a reserve of savvy and experienced people in this town that are engaged and willing to support an appropriate solution. I believe that they can and they need to be the connective tissue that can power a solution. I believe we should be leveraging and interweaving these reserves and resources and the consultant and steering committee data and our approaches to have the maximal elevating effect to both downtown merchants and the overall vibrancy of St. Helena. Committing to and defining the most efficient sorts of connectivity and building in long-term financial vitality must be considered and our solutions must demonstrate that they can best deliver that effect. I wish you all luck and continued and thoughtful and productive support. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Additional public comment. I'm Elaine Honig, and I just bought a house at 1240 Stockton, so now I get to come to meetings. Welcome. I'm psyched. Pleasure. Thanks. <laughs> um, so we know each other from, I live right now over on Bell Canyon near in the reservoir, and I've become good friends with the guy that works there and runs it. And he talks a lot about the infrastructure repairs and how hard that is and what, how much they've got to you know, spend on that, and then the water system. And then I noticed when I moved to town and started spending more time here, when I walk at night, it's really quiet. And I've noticed the little shops are starting to close, and they've been closing for a while, and just kind of wondering what's going on as I pay attention. And, you know, being new, basically I look up and go, looks like we've got some complicated problems, and it looks like more people need to kind of, I think of it like you had a dinner party, and you got a kitchen full of dishes, and people got to step up and help. So I started chatting with people, and I noticed we have a Harvard, a retired Harvard urban planning professor in town who is a killer resource. And we talked about, I think you spoke of hiring, or you did, you talked about using our local resources. So he would be thrilled to be on a commission or on a, you know, some kind of a planning service or whatever these... Uh, workshops you guys are talking about, I'd be happy. Um, I think there's a lot of people in the room that would love to, if we're doing more. And I just notice, as I think about it, and the limited money we have, and the rev need for revenue, you know, how do we deal with the complexity of Amazon's impact on downtown? The hollowing out of town that now, you know, 50% of our homes are second homes. 
we need bodies in town. How do we get them? What do we do? How do we manage them? How do we deal with that delicate dance of not becoming Disneyland? Um, you know, how do we compete in the marketplace? What do we want to do? And I feel for you guys, these are complicated, big, hairy problems. And, um, and I can see too, everyone in the room has a, an opinion about stuff. So it's all so hard. And I guess really I'd like to sort of get involved and show up and be here and not attach to an outcome. Um, I do think we need to, as I look at Adam Street from a business perspective, I'm in business, you know, I do see that as a potential revenue source for the city. I do see it as something we want to pay attention to taking care of so that we don't kind of cook the goose at some point. Um, I also see that, uh, what was I going to say that, oh, about Adam Street and I get just protecting that, but then I also see we are going to have complex problems around that. So how do we manage that? And um, I also think from a sustainability perspective on the on the city, what do we keep? What do we tear down? Obviously, it looks like city halls, you know, beyond repair. So where is an effective place? Do you look at the library and say, hey, scoot over, you got a roommate here for a while while we sort this out? Do we put them somewhere else? Um, and I, get, I know you guys are all wrestling with this. So I um, am here to show up and help and participate. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Additional comment? I'm seeing some from the back. Um, Leslie Stanton. I hear a lot about... Um, well, no matter what you do, it needs to be maintained. I've worked for the city for many years. And the fight to maintain the building has been ongoing. So that's something you also need to think about is, is it going to continue like this with anything new that you do uh, to get things repaired? It's not easy. Um, took four years for me to get a lock on the children's room door in the library after we were at an active seminar study. Those kind of things should not take that long. Um, and getting the roof repaired. We've been talking about this for at least 10 years, it's been known. Things take a long time here. Maybe we wouldn't be in such trouble with our buildings if things moved along and got repaired. And you're just gonna have that same problem with anything new that happens. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Hi, uh, Tim Neiman, uh, St. Helena. Um, I think most of you know I served on the SHAPE Committee um, with a few of you. Um, I, along with Mark Smithers, who was the chair of the committee, uh, did most of the analysis of the financing options, the many options that were included in that report. Um, uh, just as a point, um, I think the full report of the SHAPE Committee is still up on the website. I would encourage anybody in the audience who is, or who is watching um, to go and read it again. The committee did some fine work, um, I think, I must say. Um, so um, I'm going to talk to the second item on your agenda there uh, about the uh, possible task force, expert task force. Um, I would I encourage the committee to um, reach out to Mark Smithers um, as a member of that. Um, nobody knows the, um, the details of the financing options that were studied in the SHAPE report better than Mark. Uh, Mark's al also a former chief financial officer of a large corporation, so he's eminently qualified to weigh in on financing options. Um, I should point out that um, Mark is not here. He's in Montana right now. I did reach out to him, and he has uh, uh, approved me putting his name forward here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not just doing this. Um, so I would encourage you, if you do go ahead and put together um, an, an expert task force, to reach out to Mark. Um, I think he would be a really valuable addition to represent the uh, financial work and all of the work that was done on the SHAPE Committee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there additional public comment? Hello, Jason Calparis, 1421 Stockton Street. Uh, thank you, Mayor Ellsworth and City Council. Um, it's really hard to see your town change so much and uh, know that change does need to happen. And I, I've been been on the SHAPE Committee. 
um, and felt like there was a lot of experts on the shape committee and, and we put in a lot of time to that and I and I do want to see change happen in town and but what I am seeing and I and I, I don't want to get ahead of myself because I know we're talking about those two agenda items but it's a little disheartening to see us create a puzzle and looking at uh, where City Hall is and the library and the historic society and it doesn't feel like we have a, a grand vision of that Adam Street parcel and until we really look at where the finances for all of these buildings and all this infrastructure is going to come from and how we're going to finance those options to me it doesn't make sense to choose what we're going to do with the lot or any any single lot so I would I would hope that we would really look at our financial options and how we're going to really fund these things before we start cutting up parcels and 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 potentially take one of our largest assets the Adam Street parcel and and change it for the uh, future generations thank you thank you thank you additional comment yeah. hi guys uh, Peter Scott from here in St. Lena. Before I make a comment on tonight's subject, this is a little off topic, but I did want to comment and congratulate the city staff and members on the way you handled the recent fire dangers. I thought the communication that came from Cindy and from Mark and the rest of the staff, the mayor, um, was excellent, so thank you for that. Um, regarding uh, tonight's topic, I'm going to try to address my thoughts as they relate to the criteria you've got up there. And... Um, I followed this process through the SHAPE Committee and even before that. A couple things became very clear to me, and this may be obvious to everybody, but um, one, the fact that we neglected so many properties and didn't invest in new development in our city has cost us. And two, it's cost us so much that our present um, funding just isn't going to be enough to, to cover what we need to do. I think that's obvious and should be obvious to everybody. Um, in terms of criteria for correcting that, two things come to mind that we need to tap into. I mean, we're a very fortunate community and that we have so much tourism that enters one end of our town and leaves the other end <clears throat> without spending a dollar. And we need to tap into that tourism. It sounds obvious, but we're not doing a good enough job with that. And at the same time, we need to balance that with community needs and character and all those issues that we talk about. So often I hear this process sort of put as an either or. Either we build an enormous resort, let's say on Adams, or we leave it as open space. And I think there's ways that as part of your decision process, you can bridge both those um, alternatives. Um, or the other thing that I bring up is, well, let's take a look at alternative revenue sources for any of these projects. Um, a new city hall, for instance, if it were to go on the same property, why wouldn't you use part of that process that faces Main Street or the park um, for retail revenue? Um, that kind of thing can help with uh, revenue-based bonds. And the same would go with uh, Adam Street, um, anything that goes in there. Um, some of that space can be leased out for revenue. Um, and naming rights. I think that's an important thing that's been brought up before, but if we put, let's say, uh, some sort of pavilion in there that can be leased out for events and has naming rights from one of the large corporations in town. <clears throat> um, those would be the things I'd mention as far as financing is concerned, but um, going back to the selection criteria, something that uses more of the tourism dollars that enter one end of our town and leave the other end without stopping to spend a dime here. We need to capture that, but we need to do it within the framework of our existing community. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Philip Ward, um, I'm on Spring Mountain. I've been, I grew up here and um, I've been gone for a little while and I'm back and I haven't loved the changes um, that have been pretty obvious, especially on Main Street. And I've been in real estate a long time and I'm also offering my help and consultation and whatever aspect is needed. Um, I've done my best to look at the budget and all of the needs that we have, and it seems like we don't have enough money. 
I mean, frankly, that's, you know, with the water, pension, you know, all of these things. So I think that figuring out what our realistic costs are over the next 26 and a half years, um, figuring out what that is really looking like and how we can bolster our budget to solve those problems, to me, is the first thing everyone should do. Not about figuring out where, where's going where, but how do we increase revenue? Because we can't do all the things that we need as a little town, because we are a little town, to you know, help everyone live here happily without looking at your budget first. So if we go, we want, we want, we want, we gotta figure out how we pay, we pay, we pay. So um, that's what I'd love for things to be held out first before we go choosing locations for things um, and figuring out what, it's, what is it really going to cost us and what do these individual items really break down and cost and for how long do they last and where is our capital coming from down the road when they need to be redone. So, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Is there additional public comment? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. My name is Lowell Smith. I've lived in St. Lena for 54 years. And I have just a couple basic questions. I can't recall, and maybe someone else can recall, where a council going way back to the 60s and beyond has ever sold an asset in St. Lena. Every time that idea came up, it says, we can't do that. So I think that's just a starting point of thinking, wow, if there is a built-in hesitancy to talk about ever selling a city asset, you've got challenges on number one, I mean, number two. Next week, of course, I'm sure we're going to be able to zero in on that a little better. And of course, the other challenge I think we addressed is our main street is a state highway. And that's a challenge, let me tell you. In 1974, we approved the dual lanes in the middle on both sides, the city council did. It took eight years for Caltrans to paint the lines. And I called them every month for seven of those eight years. So we're at the mercy of forces, particularly beyond our control, uh, when it comes to our, our, our main street. It's a challenge you all are aware of, I'm sure. But uh, layering all of these challenges you're going to have to be looking at. Uh, I wish you luck. Lots of luck. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Additional comment? Um, Caldwell on Crane. Um, good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, I'm really excited about uh, this meeting tonight because I, I, I was so glad that where there was a preliminary approach before the Nolan Town would give an assessment of what the cost would be because it's so easy to start rolling with numbers uh, and without really stopping and saying, how, how are we getting here? Because it's so easy once the train leaves the station, we don't know how to like do a, a reset to say, are we going in the right direction or what's going on? So I kind of understood that the whole idea tonight was to come up with some ways to maybe help the council come up with a way to enhance the process. So I came with a, the old simple pros and cons checklist where one side or the other is going to get the check off. And you know, what I thought I would do was, based upon the idea that I think we, the sites were like 3A and 3B and 1B, in other words, the emphasis was either going to be the development on Adams or the development on Maine. So I put the two categories of Maine and Adams, Maine being 1B and Adams 3A, 3B. So then I thought, well, what about a simple pros and cons checklist where I could plug in these questions and have them kind of counter off of the five categories of the Adams parcel, connectivity, the pedestrian connectivity of the town, the downtown in itself, the historical downtown, if you go further down, in other words, how, how do these sites affect revenue and how do these sites affect viability? Now, this is not an exercise that I normally do, do day and night. I mostly sell artwork. So uh, this is all kind of amateur for me. So, but I wanted to uh, just go down the line and just uh, plug in some of these questions. One is, is like the decision between Maine and Adams as far as like the Adams parcel. Well. If the emphasis is being put on Maine, moving all the resources to, to develop 
a future library, a future cultural center, community center, et cetera, et cetera, which is 1B, and moving the city hall staff into the um, library. Then what does it do in terms of the rest of Adams in terms of it had to be sold at a hotel? Well, what it does is if you checked it off, it would mean that you would probably could get away with a single-story hotel in Adams. So no matter how you approach these questions, they're going to start to pop up impacts in other areas. The main emphasis of, of this whole exercise is to say that we have a limited amount of resources, so we've got to make the best use of these resources. And so we have two concentric circles. One is the main street, which is the historical downtown. Should we put the emphasis in shoring up that historical downtown, or should we create a parallel universe to start all over again on Adams Street? So the question I have is, is that with, with the limited amount of money, and, and knowing that you know we, we just we can't have everything, there has to be trade-offs. And so I thought that with this kind of a check mark, a, a pros and cons worksheet, maybe would help the council kind of you know guide themselves along. In other words, which site would really be the best place to emphasize the city resources? Thank you. Thank you. I see some comment. Good evening. I'm Ann Navarro. Thank you, as always, for your service and for your service during those um, fires once again. Um, a lot to deal with. Um, I'm going to stick with, try to stick with just the criteria that you had asked about. So I'll stay, try to stay pretty high level. I have three. Um, the first one is to be realistic and clear in whatever you do in your communications, in the reality of what you can and can't do. And for instance, you know, um, you know, the city is on the verge of financial destruction. Uh, you know, we think we can look back in time and see we're in much worse shape post-recession and various other times. And we can look at other cities and see um, that no one has enough money to do anything. So let's just kind of be realistic that there'll be $4 million in TOT out of one hotel. You know, just to be realistic, to help people understand that you need 90 rooms, $1,000 a night, full 365 days a year in order to get $4 million in TOT a year. So just to help the public understand, because there's a lot of stuff going on out there. Even the 60% houses are second, you know, homes. Just the reality of that, there is no basis of fact in that, and I know they did housing needs assessment, the city did by professionals, but you know, every six houses down the street are not second homes and four are, are people who live here. So um, at least there's no basis of fact that says that. So if you guys can keep everything you present to us you know, clear um, and, and real, that would be awesome. The second thing is, um, maybe consider ways of bringing people here. You know, we're talking about um, raising revenue. Well, one way to do it is to get people to come to stay in St. Helena and shop in Main Street stores and support our downtown and people to be here. And that is an event center, cultural center, something where, you know, we can think about how to get people to come here and stay here for two, three days, a small footprint, and you know maybe gain some something terrific out of St. Helena, start a name for ourselves, but have people stay in our hotels and shop in our downtown stores rather than looking at a one one fit answer. And then the last thing is to keep surveys in mind. Somebody said that earlier. I think it was Tom that said, pay attention to what the people of St. Helena want. And you know you just did another survey. There's many. I can give them all to you if you want. 07, 09, um, 11, 13. All these different surveys were done over time, and they always say the same thing, pretty much. You know, it's an a great place to raise a family because it's small and peaceful and safe. Uh, it's a rural small town is another one, even I'm basing it on what this recent survey said, and our connection to nature and open space. That's what people said are, is, is important to them. So back to the three criteria, just make sure you're clear and factual in whatever you're doing and, and make that information known to the public. Um, look at ways to bring people here 
um, maybe through an event center or through something, some way to get people to come here. Ashland has Shakespeare. Um, just consider that as a revenue generating source because it will help downtown tremendously. And then also do pay attention when you take a survey over all these years what people actually want in St. Helena. So thank you very much for your thank time you. and service. Is there additional public comment? I won't take long. I have to tell you, Lowell, I've been here 60 years in St. Helena. I came in 1959, and I wish you all could have seen this town in 1959. It was awesome. But I have to tell you, it's still awesome. I wouldn't move, live anywhere else in the whole United States of America but St. Helena. I love this city. And we need to work together to get what we need to have this community be together. So you have a job that I wouldn't wish on anybody because it's going to be really hard. But you're going to do it. And I hope we can all work together to make it happen. Thank you. Thank you. Is there additional public comment? I'm Tom Allen uh, at uh, 1703 Madrona and before that on Allen Avenue. I've lived here for about 15 years. Um, I'll just say one point on the evaluation criteria and principles. It seems to me that um, we have spent a f small fortune on consultants and what disturbs me about a lot of the work that's been done is that the wrong question was asked in those cases. So if the wrong question is asked and the scope of the analysis is not set correctly, what you get from that is interesting information, but it doesn't really solve the problem. So now I think the council is appropriately taking the opportunity to kind of assess where we are and where we should go, which in my mind is the proper approach. And to me, there's also a lack of, I want to reinforce what a couple people said earlier, we're lacking an overall vision for what to do with the Adams Street property, with City Hall, with Lyman Park, with all the assets that the city has uh, that have great value uh, to the community. And so, to me, as far as the evaluation criteria and principles are concerned, the question this time should be, what is the highest and best use of our town's assets to preserve the long-term financial viability of our town and revitalize our downtown and our community? And if you frame the question that way, perhaps this time we could work our way through to a solution that um, has uh, a really um, um, beautiful vision for where we can go that's uh, also something that we can do within our financial means and prepare us for for the future and the challenges that we know are going to come down the pike thanks thank you could i just ask you to i was trying to write while you were talking it was um preserve the long-term viability and revitalize downtown what was the end of that statement I think I think I said the long-term financial viability of our town while we also increase the vitality of our of our downtown and our community. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Phil Murphy. Um I run the Native Sons Hall. I've been, I just got here and I've been listening. Um, I think one of the things that we don't need on the Adams Street property is a new community center. Center. I think uh, Tom Faraday wrote a letter to the paper explaining to everybody about how many 
venues we have in town that we can, that can be used for events. So if you take that out of the equation, you save yourself some money. I don't think that um, building a new community center or event center or whatever you want to call it is going to change anything. For instance, the Native Sons, we have the film festival there. We were, it's it's five, seven day festival. We have the harvest uh, market, which is another three day festival um, venue. And there's enough places in town to house whatever we need to house. So what we should probably do is try to spend the money that we've got to improve what we have rather than to build something that we don't have that's just going to cost more money to run and upkeep. I run the Native Sons Hall, and it's paid for, but believe me, it takes a lot of money to keep the doors open. you got to hire somebody to run things. You've got to pay everyday expenses, so on and so forth. Rather than do that, take that money and fix what you have here already and leave what we've got to house the other events that we need in the town. I don't think there's anybody ever comes in and complains that there's no place they can go to have an event. I think we have enough places. So that's just my feed, in feed for this thing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Additional comments? Additional comments? Okay, going once, twice. <laughs> Okay, we're going to close public comment. I was very much appreciated uh, the input, and we'll bring it back to the council. Um, I'm going to check in with the city manager to see where he uh, feels we are. Can I can I make some comments? I, yes. I thought the public comment actually raised some interesting questions, and I sure. would love to discuss that. Yeah. Is that possible? Certainly. One uh, thing was mentioned by a couple people was the online survey and. Um, I'm sorry. The uh, I um, have a history of uh, expertise in statistics, and I'm a math person. And online surveys um, aren't really worth anything. So they basically don't tell you much. They tell you that you have people that are willing to fill out the survey, but unfortunately, you can't do statistical analysis. And um, it's great as anecdotal evidence. That's what it's really good at. It gives you an, an idea of what people are thinking about. But I've had this discussion with staff, and uh, we can't take more out of online surveys than, than that. I wish we could, but we can't. Um, secondly, uh, uh, I'm doing some benchmarking against other towns, and I, I want to make sure that the anecdotal um, conversation about the town's financial condition is uh, very clear. Um, the town is in actually very good financial shape. I hear that people think that we are functionally broke, and that's just not the case. Um, we have a $15 million revenue and budget, and it's well distributed between sales tax, property tax, and um, TOT tax. And if you compare us to other towns like us, or that would be our comparative set, we're in a very strong financial condition. I think that narrative really started with our overextension for the, um, even though others paid for it, the flood wall and the levee, and it's persisted to this day. Um, compare us to others, and we're really in very good shape. Um, now, that doesn't mean that we can just, out of operating budget, pay for any new facilities. That's not true. But um, I really would like us as a town to not try and undercut our um, condition because it's really much stronger than I think people who live here um, think. And then finally what I loved was the people um, talking about their expertise and wanting to participate and man I am so psyched there's I look in this room and I see folks that really understand um, a lot of different aspects that we'll be needing uh, as we push all this these pieces together and I hope just as we've done with the shape committee that we 
engage um, the experts and the expertise that we have in town, the financial, the architectural, the building, um, uh, the real estate, and uh, the other folks that really, hospitality, the folks that really understand um, how to work things. So um, th that was some feedback that I had from the discussion that I heard. Thank you. Uh, my comments are, I really appreciated, Suzanne, your comment about bringing us together. This is a really hard topic, and we all, no matter where we came or when we came from somewhere, we all live here, and we all chose to do this because we care about this town. And I don't like seeing fellow council member being um, targeted because that doesn't help us stay open. And what we need to do through this process is realize that we all have different experiences. We all talk to different people. So yes, that influences what we think. And hopefully here we get that out in the open and can really work on how do we model even up here. We all have different experiences, but how do we stay open to each other and also still go through this process in a respectful way? And that's very important to me. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is that the, um, the money piece, it is important to understand how we're going to pay for this because while we are in great financial position for our day-to-day -day operations, this is St. Helena, so the costs, I just know I'm cringing waiting for these numbers because they're going to be way higher than we ever thought that they should be. And so I think that at the same time, it is really important to understand all of the financial pieces and what our options are and then how do we get good data to be able to choose between these hard choices that we have and that would include selling off properties i'm open and i think it is a good idea to get local opinions on what our different properties appraise at so that we have good numbers to be able to make that decision at the same time looking at what can we do with sales tax or the parcel tax or what are other options so the community and we can make the best decision possible for the future knowing that that is very different based on what people's priorities are um, and also i've said this in the past but i'll just say it openly i think that we could have a couple more hotels in town i want more people to stop and spend money in saint Helena. I think that on Adam Street, there's a lot of complications, including the road going through. I don't even understand all of the complications yet, but I know that there's big ones. And my priority right now is to make sure that our city staff have a safe place to work. And we know that the building is falling apart with City Hall. I would love to be able to just go in and fix it up. And environmentally and resource-wise, I would love if we didn't have to build a new one. Everyone on shape, every expert we have paid money for has said we need a new building. So my priority continues to be something that this community we can all be proud of and that's safe. Even with the library recently, I love the library, but I was in it with some small kids during the fires and smoke was just pouring into that thing. And I realized that there are some needed improvements with our new reality with climate change and how we're dealing with these fires so often with smoke. We want the library to be a safe place for people to go to. And it wasn't with smoke and the way it was coming in. Um, so that became more of a priority for me as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So comment? Yeah, I want to address um, a couple of comments or two or three that really resonated with me. And one of them is that maybe we're doing this a little backwards and we should do the financing first. Um, that we should, before we decide what goes where and on the basis of how much it costs, know what all the options are that are out there um, to pay for these things. Um, it, it goes to a comment that Leslie made about maintenance. Um, Public-private partnerships are one way to build buildings where the maintenance obligation remains with the builder and the city essentially pays rent. Um, and I think it's something we need to learn more about as a financing option and learn about all the financing tools that are out there and then maybe decide um, what's going where and, and why. Because I fear that otherwise we are, to make the decision and then figure out how to finance it is seeming to be more and more backwards to me, um, based on the comments. I want to talk about the process. I thought Tom Belt made a really good comment about um, surveying, and it's come up, you know, you're not paying attention to what people want. 
I think we have to have enough information to survey people in a way that is meaningful. I think we have to be able to, when we get to the point of where we think we know how to finance things or what options there are and we think we know where you know, some buildings might go, I think that's the appropriate time um, to t test the community in some meaningful way and not just reserve that for you know, a ballot measure. Um, I think Paul shared a, a survey once that was done in Calistoga, very, very detailed. And I think rather than just asking, do you prefer this here or there, um, you gotta give more context to the questions. Um, on the process, I ac absolutely agree that we need to involve residents. We have tried to involve residents in every step of the way here, and I know there are people out there who are um, very experienced in finance and other aspects that can help, and I, you know, I welcome that. So, I guess my main concern is maybe we're maybe we need to restart <laughs> and look at financing. Mr. Doring. So uh, I am in agreement with almost, every, I think, everything that our, my fellow council members have said so far, and I appreciate the comments. Um, so, and I also appreciate all of your comments. One of the things I've been thinking about, especially in the last couple of years, is the notion of the binary and how we, we get stuck in the either or, and a couple of you have mentioned that tonight. And I'm just... Uh, imploring our community to really step back and think about how important it is to think beyond that with, with, with what I call the wider eye. There's so much more that we can accomplish. We, we, even on this council, we sometimes have had battles about that because we're looking at it in a way that may be more narrow. But I, I've been thinking more and more that we can accomplish all of these things together with a wider eye and, and not thinking it's gotta be this or it's gotta be that. And that takes a, a lot for people to just kind of grapple with that. That's, this is one of the things I grapple with, so it's not easy to do. But I'm glad a, a few of you have mentioned that tonight because it's very important uh, to sort of be humble when we approach these things and know that we don't know everything. You know, but also be willing to take a risk to bring our community together so that we can be together. I love that, I love that concept. For me, um, there's a couple of things in terms of the criteria. One, one of the most important, and, and it has not been talked about, and maybe my brain thinks this way, but it is the concept of risk reduction. And so as we go down this road, there are going to be a lot of risks facing the city of St. Helena. And one of the risks that I see is lack of capacity to handle these big items. Uh, you know, when you get involved in big construction and big projects and those kinds of things, you are grappling with tremendous risk. So I think one of the criteria we have to think about is how do you reduce risk as much as you can? Um, and there are different ways of doing that. One Mary mentioned that I've been looking at a little bit is the public-private partnership concept where that risk is to the degree we can negotiate it passed on to somebody else, a private person who is also a partner of ours. So it's, it's a concept, a criteria to at least think about. Reduction of risk legally, you know, cost overruns, construction delays, all those things will be miserable unless we think about that up front. Um, the other sort of criteria that I have is a notion in my mind, it's a simplified way of saying common good for common good. We have these beautiful properties right now uh, that are part of the commonwealth, the public good. And so one of the criteria that we need to focus on and maintain is if we are to transfer the look or shape of that property, we have to respect the common good that was there before it was changed and try to maintain as much of the common good as we can. And common good means something different to everyone. For me, it's open to the community, not walled off. 
open to the community, used by the community, but a benefit to the community to deliver some of the things that we are seeking. So common good for common good. I think that's an important criteria that we should at least think about. Um, another thing is, is the, the criteria of trying to minimize our tax burden if we can. Not increase our tax burden, but try to minimize it. And everyone, well, that's a loaded word. He wants to build a hotel and you know, no taxes. Well, no, no, I just want it to be in the mix of, of discussion when we go forward and have a financial discussion because there are going to be some big ticket items here and there are going to be different ways of paying for it, including our pocketbooks. So for me, I'd like to minimize that if I can. And I, I'm sure that most of you would too. Um, you know, we talked about the, the, the different strengths in the community and the expertise. We have expertise right here, and one of the things that gets lost is that we have to value our expertise, and we have, everybody brings something to the table that is unique and important. And I'm just very uh, glad and happy and thrilled to be with this group of people because we all bring, you know, different things, land use, financial, management, sort of the pulse and history of the community, a sense of being. And, I have a little bit of you know, talent that I bring too, just a little bit. Uh, so we have to recognize that and, and, and use that talent that we have here uh, when we go through the decision-making process. But what, what I would ask of my fellow council members is, once we make a decision, let's stick with our decision. Let's move it forward. Let's all unify around whatever it is. That's going to be important. Um, otherwise, it's going to, the message we send to the community is going to be uh, not as good as it could be if we all rally around the decision we make. It's going to be a hard decision, whatever it is. So I think that's an, an important criteria for us. I agree with Mary that we have a lot of um, built-in criteria already. The mission statement that we have, the vision for the city, there's a lot of good stuff there. I happen to be one of the authors <laughs> of a lot of that language, and it wasn't just willy-nilly. It was thought out. So there's a lot there, and, and our goals that we have for the city, all of that you know, should, should weigh upon us as we move forward. So uh, I guess the last thing, and I, and I know that Council Member Chouteau has been really on this, is the, the notion of climate change and, and how we respond to it. All of the things that we do has to be environmentally superior, not just so-so. We have to talk and think about energy use, water use, reduction of emissions, we should be the ones leading the private sector if we can. Let's lead the private sector in how to build a building that we should be proud of that will stand the test of time uh, so that we can say, hey, we are part of, of responding to climate change in an appropriate way. It, it is an exciting time. We should all be excited by the ability to do that because there's so much technology out there and there is a lot of expertise out there. Believe me, it's not my area. And I would be looking forward to um, receiving that information from folks. I guess the other thing, and I've said this many times before, I'll say it again, let's value our employees. You know, our employees should be in safe, healthy environments where they want to come to work. Right now, our city hall is not that. Our public works uh, yard is not that. Corporate yard is not that. Our library obviously has some issues. You know, we, we need to get beyond, hey, you know, <laughs> I know you were saying it in a different context that these folks kind of are brought in, but we need to, you know, respect the folks who work for us because they are us in, in a way. So those are, those are my, my thoughts on the criteria. Um, really, I have, my, as I'm getting older in life and <laughs> more tenured on this, on this council, my agenda becomes reduced because I'm, I'm, I'm not, I might not even be here when this finally rolls out. Likelihood, I won't be. So, you know, let's move forward together. Thank you. Um, I'm going to make a few comments and then uh, pass it over to the city manager to sort of see where we are. Um, so to me, looking at this, uh, we're putting together an inventory of criteria, what needs to be considered as we make this uh, decision. We have information from the SHAPE Committee, from the Steering Committee uh, that, that put together recommendations. I, 
I concur that capacity uh, is a is a criteria. We're a small town. What can we achieve? Uh, uh, I think that we also have to look at what is priority, what are our priorities, um, what the community wants, needs to be a part of, uh, a, a large part of what we consider. I believe we are in the right place at the right time with the right group of people to make the, the, the right decision. Uh, the inventory of financial aspects, uh, I think um, there is a lot of expertise in, in town and through uh, consultants we've worked with before, I think we can put together a team that looks at this from every angle. We are lucky. We're a fortunate town. Uh, financially, we are uh, we're a fortunate town. Uh, and so uh, we, need to, we need to keep that in mind. Um, it's an opportunity, as Mr. Doring said, to lead environmentally. This is a wonderful opportunity for us. Um, the, um, many of the things Mr. Doring said, I, I'm just going to back up. Uh, if we all agree on the criteria, if we all agree on the process, then when we get to that decision, we should be all ready to stand behind that decision as we move forward. Uh, I do believe, and it was made, it's made clear to me every week, but more so last week than any other weeks since 2017, the value of our employees in this town. These folks uh, are the heart of what keeps this place running. In St. Helena, we have $2.5 billion worth of assessed property values, and it is the employees of the city uh, in all the different departments that are the heart of, of keeping that managed. So I believe in our decisions, we want to make sure that we're providing them a workspace that, that honors them for their commitment uh, to us particularly in times like last week uh, when, when people gave a lot and did a lot. So with that, um, th those are just some thoughts. I'm going to be composing m more of my ideas on the criteria and submitting, submitting those. Uh, but I will uh, pass it over to the city manager to sort of see where we are at this point. OK, I've, I've taken some notes, but I really want to start with um just an observation that I'm really proud of the discussion tonight. It's, it's really a hard issue, and I know there are competing challenges and ideas, and I'm just really proud of the conversation. It's a very difficult issue. Um, just a couple comments about next, next week on Tuesday. Um, one thing I didn't mention is we're not setting up that discussion with Nolan Tam and asking you to make any any site selection decisions, any financing strategy decisions, it's a receive and file in that respect. We are looking for some feedback on where you want to go next, uh, but some of that is happening tonight, and that was really the intention of um, why this meeting is held tonight. Um, but I just want to emphasize that that will also be, that next week will essentially be a receive and file. And yes, the numbers are, are large. Um, the, the numbers will escalate over time. So you will hear that uh, we have forecast, we have numbers that we'll share with you that are today's numbers. And the, the consultant has, the architect has forecasted those out to a construction date of 2022 for planning purposes, just so we see how those escalate over time and they do grow. Um, Um, there's been interest in ad hoc, um, and ad, I'm sorry, I think there's interest in, in some form of a citizen task force, so to speak, but I think there also can be value in some form of a council ad hoc, potentially, based on the comments tonight with respect to criteria. So what I'm thinking about is I'm going to share with you sort of an, a draft agenda for a second meeting on this topic. But one concept would be an ad hoc committee, meaning two members of the council, not a formal Brown Act meeting, work together to look at the criteria that we shared with um, everyone tonight, incorporate some of the concepts uh, that were shared tonight, and bring that document back to the full council for a conversation. That's a potential agenda item on a subsequent meeting. Uh, another potential agenda item would be 
um, it wouldn't be that difficult for us to inventory a number of revenue options for the council if you would like us to and give you some ballpark order of magnitude numbers so that you see what certain numbers look like i think i would if you're if you will indulge me i would discourage certain types of um, ideas so a good example of that would be i wouldn't recommend that you consider any type of a hotel tax increase because the incremental a the numbers are already 13 percent the highest in California, I believe, is 15. I don't, there, there's not a lot of revenue potential off that. It's not a, a, a strategy I would recommend. Uh, but I would like to inventory various options for you. And I think there would be, you know, three or two or three that would be reasonable for you to consider if that was of interest. And uh, it may be appropriate to have some form of a discussion about a task force selection process so that we potentially would queue up a few different ideas for you to react to and provide some feedback on and then set in motion in advance of a following meeting. So with that, I would also acknowledge that there are a number of other questions that the staff report raises. And we're ha I'm happy to walk through those again with you. We can jump to the last slide and look at those five questions, or um, we can begin to store, begin to shape that next agenda of a workshop series that helps inform your process for decision making. Um, I think this was a successful meeting. Instead of reviewing it, maybe we should close it and. <laughs> respect respect our citizens and respect us do well do we have enough do you have enough information what I want to make sure is that we have enough uh, enough has come together to give you some direction I want to make sure that we're designing um, what we're doing moving forward so that so that we have a, a public engagement component that, that we're looking at how that's going to come into play, a financial component, how that's going to come into play. Do, do you feel like you have enough from where we are now? Let me give you some quick ideas. Let's have a bench for some finance experts. Let's have a bench for some architecture experts. Let's have a bench for some construction experts. Let's have a bench for some real estate experts. Let's have four different groups of experts from our town folks that are willing to be on the bench, to be asked questions, to listen to. So this is completely ad hoc. They don't need to be, it doesn't need to be formalized, but it can be informal, but it could be very effective. Um, we've got world-class architects. We've got super smart finance guys. We've got, why not uh, informally pull those guys into discussions? Um, uh, of course, everything would come back in a public meeting, but at least that will help us to steer, right? That's all. I have a comment about your first idea about the ad hoc. I, I, just a point of order, I, I just, uh, I think the mayor is, is the one who allows us to talk, and I think we have to get out oh, of the habit of sorry. Okay. doing that. You know, I try to acknowledge the mayor, and you know, I just, point of order. I'm not picking on anyone, but I think we get in a habit of doing that. Okay. Well, I'll try to manage. <laughs> I don't think the mayor. Well. I don't think the mayor was finished with his comments. I'm sorry, Mr. Ellsworth. Forward. Did I uh, did I jump the? Well, I just there? I just what I, you know I I think that as long as we feel that we have material that we're giving to the city staff to the city manager to 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 round this package out, and so I want to vet it out through us that we're all there feeling like we've given what we need to give and you're also acknowledging you've got enough so, I, I have heard go ahead miss miss Koberstein I mean you frequently hear from all of us at one time or another I think the idea of trying to have two of us synthesize everything uh, tonight doesn't make a lot of sense I, I I I sort of think we should each give you our view of what, what we thought transpired tonight and then have you uh, sort of synth synthesize it instead of you know our usual subcommittee that's just my um, preference can, can I can I just clarify I was referring only to the evaluation criteria that were the I know. pressing re the services buildings and the pressing needs and 
I, what I've also heard are a number of ideas, but I haven't had a I haven't heard a council consensus on direction. So I'm going to want to hear multiple council members weigh in on ideas so that I have clear direction. So one of the ideas that had been brought up was, do we want to work with a facilitator to help organize or manage these ideas? That was one idea that had come up earlier that I wanted to make sure I put in the mix. Uh, Mr. Mr. Doring, do you have a comment? Oh, I'll get back. I think there's a lot more consensus on the ideas uh, than we give ourselves credit for. I, I, I would recommend to the council that the staff simply uh, look at the tape, review their notes, sort of uh, make a list, and as in a transparent way, bring it back to us, and we either live with the list or we narrow it down a little bit. Um, I think there was a lot of overlap in what we said. Uh, I, I, I think that would be the easiest way to do it because we will go on for quite some time here. Yeah. I think it's easier for me to respond to a list of, of what was said tonight and then we just winnow down if there's anything on that list that, that somebody cannot live with. I, I, that's what I would recommend. Okay. <clears throat> Sounds good. And would that come back at a subsequent uh, workshop meeting like this or would that come back through uh, staff presenting it to the, the council through, through email? I'm anticipating we would come back to you in a, in a workshop. Okay. Similar to this. And I, I did have an eye on trying to uh, complete the conversation tonight by 8 p.m. So we're still ahead of schedule. Okay. Uh, <laughs> So I would anticipate wanting to bring you a, a meeting agenda that also would conclude by 8 p.m. Um, but could I receive a little bit of feedback on it? So I'm changing the concept of two council members working on the evaluation criteria to let's start with a, a criteria that we already have, mm -hmm. heard a couple new ideas, we'll incorporate those, and then bring a document back to you to react to. Is there interest, council interest in having the staff put together a summary of a few revenue ideas? because you obviously have other revenue opportunities beyond just what you can do through measures. It seems to me we're seriously considering some kind of committee or task force that involves a lot of local talent related to finance. And I think that the time to present that information is when we have that group together. You know, it should be part of that and, you know, part of the analysis of all the financial resources that are available to us. Is that okay? Just my view. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah and I, th I think that with a, a task force like that, we'll get the full the full inventory, and if there's something missing, we'll have each our own list that we'll be able to cross-reference with that, so. Okay. And for and me, the priority of the task force is first the financials. I hear what you're saying about real estate and all of that, and maybe, I don't know if there's another way to do it, but right now, what I was hearing tonight is that we really want to understand how are we going to pay for this, and that's priority. Council Member Knudsen had an idea for several different benches, and uh, just to clarify, do you see different uh, groups or one single group, two to, you know, multiple groups, right? So. We will, if, is that also of the, I'm just wanting to make sure that we have consensus that multiple groups would be the feedback for the staff? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so. I think we should really talk about what kind of groups these are gonna be. I, mean, I know that the SHAPE committee was an incredible amount of work for the staff because it was a formal committee and subject to the Brown Act, but it also managed to get the information out there in a way that steering committee um, format doesn't quite reach as wide of an audience. Um, it's been helpful, but I think we need to talk about, you know, how are we gonna get whatever work is being done, either in a steering committee or whatever, how are we gonna disseminate it and get people involved in understanding it? I think also wanting to make sure that we're moving closer to a decision uh, and decisions. Uh, so with with the groups uh, that we're not trying to go go backwards, but try to go forwards towards decision. And so hopefully, however the groups are organized, there's a 
there's a um, uh, an ability to 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 keep it timely uh, in what we're trying to accomplish. May I add my yes. Yes. additional scent here? Um, we came up with a really great process for the <laughs> publicly accessible open space and walking trails sub committee that's part of the Parks and Rec Commission. And when you get when you make the clarion call to the citizens who have expertise who want to participate, guess what? They tend to show up. And the remit in my mind is let's look at a bunch of different options. There are so many, but they're standard muni, muni finance infrastructure options. And let's fully vet them with the smart people that want to participate. And I, I would not have no criteria. I would have, you know, I would expect you get five or six people and we'll sit around the conference room or they'll sit around the conference room with staff with April for a couple of meetings, three or four meetings, two meetings. I don't, it may not take that long. And guess what? we'll have some additional feedback from our town. I, I don't, I hope we don't, I don't think we need to overthink it. I'm just interested in the process on how you make the selection on who's part of that. So what I, what I would anticipate doing is working with the city attorney to bring you an option or two on process so that you can then decide how to appoint people to those tasks, to those benches, so to speak. Yeah, and I, I think that that's important because, as we say, if we all agree on the process, then we should be able to uh, stand stand together on the final decisions. So with that. Um, but these are option generators, not, I mean, this ad hoc group is not going to tell us exactly how we should finance something. They're going to give us some ideas, right? I mean, that's, they're experts. So instead of spending $25,000 on another consultant somewhere who's going to tell us stuff, we're going to rely on the community to tell us stuff. And if we have questions, we'll ask them, right? I mean, I'm hoping it's, That's what I. am I, is this too ad hoc -y? <laughs> I think that's the purpose. That's the purpose is to get the, I, I think the, the options out there. I think the question, oh, Good. let yes. me raise my hand. I think the question is how transparent is it going to be? Is it going to be a bunch of people going into Mark's office and sitting and talking to him and then, you know, the staff writes a report or is it going to be some kind of public meeting that other people can come to, um, learn about it? Is it going to be a forum at the library or something where they sit there and talk in front of people and they can be asked questions? which. I personally think if we would move to something like that, it would be more helpful and maybe also help us, you know, bridge some of these different views we have. Um, so I, I agree that we, we should tap into people, but I would like it to be more transparent, more productive, more engaging with the rest of the community. I agree with that, even if it could be a workshop, that it's in front of all of us and that group is reporting and we're having the dialogue together publicly not the whole shape process though because I know that that was too big too much we can't do that and do what we're doing so what about a workshop yeah well, mul multiple workshops because okay. if we have different groups then each of the groups would have some form of um, outreach and um, that's workable so we'll we'll work together on bringing you back a process to react to and to provide us feedback on and then we can get started i would anticipate that we would have a, a short turnaround time and so i don't know what that number is if it is it six weeks or eight weeks i don't know but we'll we're close now to having options that they can react to and we have numbers that they can react to and so we're ready for those conversations okay uh, is there anything else? No, thank you. I, I just, I, I, we shouldn't undervalue the notion of transparency. I think it's critically important as we move forward, not only in this phase, but all the phases uh, in, the, in this world of conspiracy theories and people just come up with all kinds of different things if they're not engaged in the process. So frankly, I would add that to my list of criteria as we go <laughs> forward, that transparency in everything we do has got to be critical. Um, even the perception of something you know, sort of hashed out in, in private would be kind of, uh, so we have to guard against that. That's it. Very good. Uh, Mr. Presswich, do you have now? Okay, I think we're good. I want to thank everybody for being here, and uh, I'm going to adjourn the meeting. Thank you.